This program and its contents are designed for information and educational purposes only. This program does not render medical advice or professional services and is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. The information provided here should not be used for the purposes of diagnosing or treating a medical or psychiatric condition. If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, consult your health care provider. Hi. Welcome to Positive Momentum. I'm Heather McHugh. I'm Diane Silva, and today we have Joe Schwartzfeger. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Joe's successes. And Joe's a very interesting person. We're looking forward to really getting in there and talking about what you, what you do, and how we've met, and just different aspects of your life. Okay. Okay, cool. go ahead. <laughs> 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 you on this spot. <laughs> Don't you know what to do? <laughs> I guess we did. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Let's do Kermit and start off there. Because <laughs> um, I'm really just a, uh, I guess, a workaholic. Okay. Um, I like to uh, do quite a few things. Uh, currently involved a lot in aviation, um, ground instructor, working on the, the flight instructor portions, um, commercially rated, and I uh, also work in the maintenance world, which is good to get them all together. Um, helps you understand little things better. Mm -hmm. um, I do some work currently on uh, the private security details for a hospital in the area, and meet a lot of interesting people that way. Uh, just became a, a recent recent father. Oh, yay! Congratulations. One little girl. Cool. It's an incredibly interesting experience. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little sweetheart. Mm -hmm. uh, do a lot of uh, training on the side. I, I'm very much into learning in school. Yeah. I, I have a question for you. So not only can you fly a plane, but you can also repair it. So mm -hmm. you would be a good person to have in the air. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, yeah. It gives me a unique. Uh, perspective when something's going wrong it does help a lot with the uh, troubleshooting yeah um, you yeah. hear a noise and you're like oh well I know from past that that is probably this and we're okay or um, oh that was not good we need to land now yeah. oh okay helps with decision-making okay yeah, it would be kind of hard to crawl out there under the hood <laughs> well that's what I was thinking I was kind of you know <laughs> dual duty in the air type of thing and um, that would be cool it would, that I would don't, be don't know if I'd be uh, <laughs> willing to do wing walking to, <laughs> to fix the plane. To <laughs> well, we can do low level flying, <laughs> kind of coaster right that in might, there. Might be more excitement than I could handle. You could be an <laughs> X-Man. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about what you've done with helping people with anxiety, with uh, flying and, and that type of thing. What types of things have you done? Primarily uh, due to the ground school. Um, that I teach. It's uh, presenting the information that most people don't know. Um, it's getting the, the aerodynamics, the basic aerodynamics, why the airplane flies and how it flies and why it's safe to fly and what goes into making it safe to fly and presenting that information in a very uh, calm and easy mm -hmm. going, uh, more of, instead of a classroom, more of a conversation. Um, encouraging questions, uh, just working at the uh, person's own pace, okay. um, eventually taking them into the aircraft to get them familiar with that and uh, when they're ready taking them up in a smaller aircraft uh, so they can see from the front seat what is going on, what it looks like and of course as as you're flying the person we're, we're explaining as we go step by step what what's going to happen next and making sure they feel safe and secure so that it's a good experience and that'll hopefully help encourage them to be able to get on a larger aircraft when they want to for a, a bigger trip. Okay. Well, I know you worked with Diane on um, at, at some with some portion of the anxiety with mm -hmm. flying and so um, Diane, what, can you talk a little bit about what he did for you and so forth? Well, one of the things Joe's able to do, first of all, he's, he's very supportive and he's very calm, comes across very calm. This, this is his normal demeanor. Mm -hmm. So that's very helpful. And he explains things on a level that you, anybody can get. So it makes it very easy to understand. And one of the things nice about learning the mechanics behind flying, the physics behind flying, the weather behind it all, 
is it's something you're not going to unlearn. And it really takes the mystery and the magic out of flying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with Joe's demeanor and his, his knowledge and his passion for aviation, it's like, how can you be afraid of something that somebody's so passionate about? Well, I can be, mm -hmm. but some of his passion rubs off. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it kind of is transferred because he, I remember one, okay, one time exactly, remember I was flying to um, Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. And I texted him, I'm like, I'm freaking out. I'm going, I want to, I want to drive. Tell me again why flying is so, you know, so safe. And I texted him and my previous flight instructor. And Benji comes back with a couple lines and Joe's got this great big thing about, <laughs> you know, this is why, you know, because there's people texting and driving and, you know, the pilots are not texting and driving. They paid for this. They did a lot of training mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, just logical makes sense you know and since i wasn't in a full-blown anxiety attack at the same at that time it helped mm -hmm. and i kept that text and that's how i was able to so have you s seen diane anxious about flying have you witnessed oh, yeah. that <laughs> okay well absolutely um there there was an old picture she showed me it had a cat hanging from the ceiling um, <laughs> with a lot of frazzled lines around it and uh, yeah that's <laughs> pretty accurate description <laughs> and so is that pretty typical then with uh, people who have the anxiety when it's everybody is going to react a little different uh -huh. um, the, the gentleman I had a good success with um, the last one I flew with he would get very very tense and very quiet and um, he would have little spikes and peaks in his anxiety when we were in the air mm -hmm. and that would cause him to squeeze his hand and he ca carried a water bottle with him oh. and left it open so when <laughs> when his legs got wet he knew okay i gotta breathe and calm down <laughs> everything's gonna be okay so every, everybody's gonna be a little different oh. you gotta do what works you yeah. just do <laughs> if it's silly but it works it's not yeah. silly if you have mm -hmm. to dump water on yourself and <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. Well, one of the things I found out too with flying, you know, and learning to fly is, A, I found out the, tech, the mechanical and you know, all that, but I also found out I like to be the passenger. I like to let someone like Joe be in charge. Mm. You know, normally it was I had to be in charge, I had to be in charge, I had to be in charge. And one of the things that learning to fly taught me is I don't want to be in control of the aircraft. I want to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to just relax and trust the person in front of me. And I trust Joe. I trust Benji. You know, these are the two. And with their knowledge and the information that they've passed along, okay, you can't just learn how to fly one plane and then fly all planes. Mm -hmm. It's not like going, oh, give me the keys to your car, I can fly your, I mean, I can drive your car. You can't do that. <laughs> I want there my flying a, car. Yeah, there is a problem there, Diane. I have to really address that one. <laughs> All right, you get the idea. But <laughs> anyway, it's not like having a car where you can drive any yeah. car once you know how to drive. It's once you learn how to fly this plane, okay, that's the plane you can fly. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. For the most part, that's correct. Uh, every, every airframe is going to have a little bit of different... Um, characteristics, different mm -hmm. numbers that they're allowed to do, benchmarks that are, are keeping things safe. Mm -hmm. So if you learn to fly one, one category of aircraft, like a single engine, mm -hmm. you're allowed to now learn all, all the other single engine aircraft, but it's gonna take about three or four hours on, on average to learn the next airplane that you're, you're going up in. Okay. Um, they're all, they all fly the same. I mean, it's all air going over and under the wings. Okay. But uh, they each have their own personality. And the safest way to fly is to be thoroughly um, knowledgeable about your plane's personality. Okay. okay. So if you wouldn't mind, Joe, for, for just the sake of, um, could you give us a brief how airplanes fly? You know, I mean, okay. you know, I, I think that's something that we all are interested in. At the same time, we don't understand it. At least I still, even now, I have at times grasping the airfoil and, you know, oh, as you say, under and over the wings. I'm like, huh? <laughs> well, um, the long and short of it, airplanes fly because of money. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know that. <laughs> that that's how they go. <laughs> you care to explain um, that for those of us who, sure. you know, maybe a little. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Because of our atmosphere, that the air that we're everyone's breathing, it's all around us. Uh, it acts like a fluid, it acts like water. Okay. Um, so what we're doing is we're creating a surface on the, the wing. Okay. And uh, on that wing, the surface 
of it is designed to go through the air with forward motion, mm -hmm. uh, which is created by the propeller or the turbine or whatever okay. type of engine is controlling it. And we're forcing that fluid to go over and under the wing. Okay. And when it goes over and under, um, we've designed the wing to make it go more distance, or you'll see a hump, or they call right. it camber. Um, so it's going faster over the top because it's got to go more distance, mm -hmm. and it wants to meet back up with its pal on the other, other side. Okay. That creates a low pressure relative to the pressure underneath the wing, and it kind of sucks the airplane up like a straw. Okay. So um, essentially, you're, you're not really flying through the air, you're, you're sucking your way up through the air. <laughs> Okay, so back to the, it takes money to fly a plane. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> I've been around you a while. Aviation is just expensive. It is. It, it um, is very it's, expensive. I, I, I like to think of it as anyone can go get a bus pass and use that transportation on the ground, and that's much more cost effective than buying your own car and going through the maintenance and insurance and fuel and, okay. and getting that certification for the car and everything. Airplanes are the same way. It's cheaper to go on a commercial airline, okay. but if you want that convenience of being able to choose where you're going, when you're going, and how you're going, you get into aviation on your own, and you can either rent or purchase your own aircraft, and there's different costs associated with that, but it's obviously going to be higher than just buying a ticket yeah. once in a while when you travel. Yeah, and then, the, then there's not just the one time learning, you have to continually learn, you have mm -hmm. to continually pass, what do you call it, a, a check ride? Well, there's, there's different levels of uh, continual training. Um, the uh, most common one for the private pilot is called the biannual um, or semi-annual review. Every two years, you sit down with an instructor and you go back over the, the ground information, anything that's changed in the regulations or the safety procedures or um, different things that they've learned in the last two years. And then you go fly with that instructor and demonstrate that uh, you're still good to go on your emergency procedures and that you're uh, competent at what you're, you're flying. It's not a really stressful thing. I mean, it's just going up and having fun. I mean, we all like to make the houses get smaller. <laughs> yes, that's we do. A good friend of mine, that's, that's his, his favorite line, make yeah. the houses get smaller, and I agree. Understood. So if this is this intense for a private pilot, so that's, you know, like you, mm -hmm. who, who, what would it be, just if you could, just a real overall global picture, high level, of what it would be for an actual, what do you call, air transport? Uh, um, someone who flies United or oh, Delta airline or... Airline transport pilot? Yeah, airline, tra thank you, yes. Um, they're, they're going through uh, company-specific training that's been approved by the FAA, okay. and uh, I don't know off the top of my head how often that comes up. It's going to be a minimum of once a year, okay. and I'm, I'm more than willing to accept from past reading, I believe it's going to be actually every six months going through some form of recurrent training. Hmm. So they really have to go through some serious training, and then the, they do. the amount of hours that they've had to have just to become, let's say, the co-pilot, not even the the, the captain. Yeah. If they were to, what would you say approximately is the amount of? Um, well, the the FAA recently posted to, just to get your airline transport pilot certificate. Um, I believe it's uh, 1,200 hours in your logbook if you are Part 141, and I believe it's at 1,500. Um, but I. I'd have to double check that up just off of memory, um, just just to get that rating. Uh, so a lot of your first officers aren't getting those jobs until over 1,500 hours of experience in smaller aircraft. And I, for me, I know 1,500 flying hours is mm -hmm. a lot. But for you know, you look at it 1,500 hours, you really don't look at it as oh, that's that big of a deal. But it you, takes a long time. <laughs> yes, it takes a long time. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of training. And there, we're not talking just flying. We're talking graduating up to different levels of aircraft as well. Correct? Like a twin engine or yeah. you know jets, and you have to be certified in each of those in order to stair step you don't, up. You don't necessarily no? have to get your your turbine certification okay. to to join the airlines. They will get that training to you. Okay. Um, it is generally mandatory to have multi-engine time, okay. um, which is good. It demonstrates that you're able to divide your attention properly in the uh, very complex aircraft environment. Um, 
different companies have obviously different requirements and different numbers that they're looking for. Well, the point I was trying to get at is, you know, one of the things I learned from all our experience together mm -hmm. and, and working through my fears and my anxieties was how much those pilots have to know. And just oh, mm -hmm. knowing that alone has make, given me so much confidence getting on the plane. The one thing I found that kind of still causes me concern is I don't get to see out that front window. <laughs> And that is, I, you know, I think like in a car, you have that big, you know, the windshield and you have all this open space that you can look at. Well, while you're in an aircraft or I'm in an aircraft, you know, all you see is the bulkhead, you see the stewardess, you see, yeah. the, you know, the cockpit's closed off. So you can't see in front of us. So that's where some of my angst comes in. That in fact of, okay, I'm in a tube. I can't escape, <laughs> you know. But those are my issues that I'm working through. Everything else with, you know, Joe and Benji and, has helped me a lot in, in understanding the flying and I don't freak out as bad you know I still have my moments and we're gonna be going on a trip soon so again it's it's right now I'm fine and I've just decided I'm done being afraid you know if it shows up I'll deal with it and if I have to text Joe I'll text Joe yeah, you know if I have to go out and we, we go to the, we go up we go up mm -hmm. you know but it's that desensitization that knowing pilots knowing what the, the, you know just how you, you, by proxy, basically, you know, learning that passion and, you know, and knowing how safe it is, you know, so I commend you guys. I mean, I think it's great. Would you, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting your certification, to become an instructor, so, what, yes. Well, what would you coming. recommend for someone, though, that doesn't have access to a pilot and, you know, lives many miles away from, say, the closest airport? What, what kinds of things can a person do? I have a brother mm -hmm. who's um, afraid to fly. Um, because the exits are really hard to get to and he's just afraid of enclosed pla spaces. Sure. So what, what, what would you recommend? Well, there's, it, it all depends on the person. What I'd recommend to start with specifically for fear of flying would be uh, go online. There's uh, some excellent resources available if you just type into a Google search mm -hmm. um, or I bl believe you've got some, some links and some yes. blog posts that, that yep. show where those resources are mm -hmm. um, on positive momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, start there and read, mm -hmm. investigate. Mm -hmm. the, the information is gonna give you a good foundation mm -hmm. to where you can decide what your next step is gonna be. Now, none of, none of uh, the people talking about flying and, and helping people getting over flying and everything can replace seeing a therapist for a deep-seated anxiety mm -hmm. problem or, or mm -hmm. an actual irrational fear. Mm -hmm. we, we can't replace that expertise, mm -hmm. but we can supplement that with okay. the information on why the airplane is doing what it's doing and okay. try and give little helpful tips, tips mm -hmm. that uh, we've used yeah. and or um, seen people use that have helped them manage mm -hmm. that actively while they're, they're attempting to fly. Definitely, and information, becoming educated is powerful and oh, just yeah. in itself and Absolutely. knowing more about what's happening and so forth, and I would agree with that. Um, I know uh, when I was talking to my brother who lives in Big Piney, Wyoming, uh, which is a very isolated area. <laughs> Probably um, a very beautiful area, though. Yeah, the mountains are right there and everything. <laughs> uh, you know, he's afraid uh, to fly, and uh, he said the last time to get him on the plane, he had to take some anti-anxiety medication because mm -hmm. kind of sedate him so he could go to fly to Texas I think it was so um, but I think it's an issue of trust um, you know power and control you know do you can you control what's happening well you put your hands in, in you put yourself in the hands of the pilot mm -hmm. and so there's a huge issue of trust there you know trusting that that plane's going to stay in the air that you're not going to fall asleep um, or the pilot, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so there's a lot. Of, and, and his big thing too is knowing where the exits are at. The problem is when you're in the air, um, you're not gonna use some, <laughs> you can't get away. Yeah, it's very, uh, very disconnecting sitting in the back of a large aircraft because mm -hmm. you've only got the small windows and if you're not fortunate, fortunate enough to have gotten a seat at the window, mm -hmm. then it's even further in closing. Mm -hmm. You just can't get a good uh, sense of what's going on, where you're at, and you can't see the cockpit. There's, those are secure now. Um, but what I would say would be the air crew 
and indeed the entire airline involved in that flight mm -hmm. are doing everything they can from the ground up to make sure that that flight is concluded safely and that all the passengers are, are arriving where they need to arrive in the same condition when they left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can catch a couple pilots or air crew eating in the, the cafes at the airport before flight and everything. Yeah. And I've sat down and chatted with one here and there. Um, most of them are, are perfectly happy to chat for five or 10 minutes. Okay. And that might help him yeah. g gain a little bit of understanding and trust with, okay, He's, he's just a guy, but he knows the stuff. We're going to yeah. be okay. Yeah. I mean, he's eating the same bagel I ate. We're yeah, right. <laughs> they're real humans. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah, good to have a point. nice toolbox, too, because, like, you know, like Joe said, you know, you have a therapist, you know, mm -hmm. have somebody that you trust that you can talk to. If, if you can, even regional airports, you know, small little airports like we have one on Millard's right here, or um, what's, what's a couple of them? Um, we got Lincoln, um, Wahoo. is a pretty decent one. There's Blair, Wahoo. There's different There's small airports everywhere. There's pilots in these small little regional airports, and they usually have intro flights. And even if you don't go in to fly, you can go in to talk to them. You can go in, and they'll, most pilots, I mean, that's what I did. On July 4th, I don't remember how many years ago, I called up, I said, I need to talk to a pilot. I want to get over my fear of flying. Mm -hmm. And they gave me Benji, who was a brand new, I think he was brand new certified flight instructor. Yeah, he had just finished. Yeah, and I went down there and I talked to him. I talked to a couple experienced pilots. Joe was there, you know, we just mm -hmm. talked. And I went to sat in, I sat in a plane, found, oh, I don't like this plane. I don't like the way this one feels because, you know, just the way it felt. Mm -hmm. I found I liked, you know, the, the, the high wings because they had doors on both sides. You know, I'd like to, that, that made me, that was my comfort level. Mm -hmm. So we worked on different things. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have to fly ever if we didn't want to, but it was just talking to the pilots. Mm -hmm. First of all, that makes them real. Mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're not this person who's locked up in, you know, whatever, imaginary, or they're, you know, takes the magic out of flying too. So it, there's just, mm -hmm. the best thing I'd say is get out there, you know, and, and work yourself through that fear. Mm -hmm. Find resources. PositiveMomentum.net is a great place to come. We've, we've got information. You know, Joe, we can access Joe through there if, we, if you want to talk to Joe. We can do that as well. Um, Heather can, you know, be contacted through there as well. well. We'll give you all the information on the contact at the end of the show. But do what you need, whatever it works for you. You know, all I can say from my own experience is you have to kind of keep that steady pressure. You don't want to get too much because you don't want that white knuckle. Oh my God, I'm never going to do this again. But you want that steady pressure to kind of keep yourself moving and pushing yourself through those fears and, and find out, okay, what's going on? Confront them and you know, talk to your therapist, mm -hmm. talk to a psychiatrist. If you need medication to fly, I still do, laughable amount, but <laughs> just enough to kind of, okay, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But just find a support group, basically. Find That's them. the most important thing I would say to anyone trying to get over any fear or block or s trying to get to a specific goal, the thing that's going to help you the most is finding at least that person or that group of persons that is going to encourage you, is support you, mm -hmm. is going to push you when you need a push, and is going to pick you up when you fall down. Right. Without that, I couldn't do anything near what I've done in the different classes and, and things I've learned in different jobs I've done. and. My wife has been the, the greatest encourager that I've ever seen, and if you can find someone like that, you can do anything. Right, and if you don't have the spouse like like Joe has, and Mickey, Mickey's oh, great. There's I people mean, out there. There's people out there, and we, we actually have a, a support group, Heather and I do, and Joe's part of it, is where we work with um, people who have fears or are stuck. We originally started out with fear flying, but we decided to broaden it to anyone who is feels stuck. They want to better their life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because you use the same principle for all of it. You know, it's education, yeah. it's co finding confidence, it's learning to trust yourself, learning to trust others. Mm -hmm. And we need each other. You know, maybe not in the sense that, oh my God, I need you. But, you know, when we fall, we need someone to help us get ourselves back up. We still have to do the work. Right. But, you know, so it's... Yeah. And Joe has been wonderful as far as getting this thing off the ground, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You'll light enough fireworks under anything, it'll fly for a moment. <laughs> But what percentage of the population do you think has a, f a fear specifically of, of flying? Uh, that would be an absolute shot in the dark guess. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine 
just the uh, the institution of flying itself, you'd probably have a, a fair amount. I, I would guess that at least 5% of every passenger aircraft has a group of people that are anxious about it in one form or another. Um, yeah. I haven't been on a passenger or commercial aircraft in the back and not met someone that was yeah. What's going on? And yeah. like that's that noise is okay. That's the landing gear coming up. It's supposed to do that. We're okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and I would agree. I mean, the first time I flew, I was a junior in high school, and uh, I flew with a group of people. So I kind of was, you know, the group mentality, like a sheep. So I <laughs> <laughs> figured everybody else was doing okay. So I'm probably okay too. You sure. know. So that really helped me out. And just the more often you fly, too, I think. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the more you do something, the more. The, the easier it it becomes. Always. So, yeah. well, Joe, if if we could, we would love to have you back. If, you know, when your sure. schedule clears up, <laughs> and it was great having you on. Oh, well, thank you for for bringing me on. I appreciate yeah. it. Oh, we it's we, been we fun. appreciate <laughs> yeah. appreciate you being here. Yeah. So, um, if you would like, we have a like I said, we mentioned the support group. It's um, positive. You can reach us at support at um, support at positive momentum dot net. <laughs> <laughs> it's been one of those days. <laughs> yeah, dot net because a net will catch you if you fall. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Very good. And right now, the, the support group meets Tuesdays, at, um, the second Tuesday of the month at Mind Body Spirit. It's 168th and Harrison. Um, if you're not in the local area and would like to be involved or at least get some information, again, contact us at support at positivemomentum.net. If you have any ideas for the show or want to um, ask questions or comments, queries, posers, whatever else, um, you can contact us at positivemomentumtv at gmail.com or um, inquiry at positivemomentum.net. And was that a mouthful or what? Right. That was a <laughs> lot. Thank you all for watching. And this has been, it's been yeah. great. Thanks. Oh, you have thank been you. up. Thank you. Plethora of information. We appreciate it. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping it helps what other people. What does a plethora mean? Uh, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, let me hear Kermit. Just interview.